Okay, so in this next video lecture, so we will be discussing about documentation in the audit working papers of the evaluation of the system of internal control. Okay, so here, um, the auditor should document his understanding of the entity's internal control using flowchart or narrative memorandum. Okay, so this is very important because this will serve as a support on the auditor's expression of opinion on the, aud uh, the audit of the financial statements. So the auditor should also document his assessment of the control risk, whether it is assessed at high or less than high, and his um, evidence, okay, to, uh, I mean, as a serve as a proof for his assessment. Furthermore, the basis for the control risk should also be document documented, but only if the control risk is assessed at level which is less than high. Okay, if meaning, um, if the auditor assess the control risk to be low, meaning it, uh, he found, he, or based on his assessment, the internal control is effective. So, in this case, he would rely more on the control. So, he should substantiate that reliance and that assessment of lower control risk. Because later on, if, for example, he committed uh, audit risk, meaning um, he stated that the financial statements are com in compliance with the standards when, in fact, it is materially stated. So, there is a great responsibility on his part. So, that's why he should substantiate this assessment. Okay. So, we have here the, the table for the assessed level of control risk. And if the auditor will document uh, the evidence or not. Okay, so if the control risk is assessed at high level, so assessment of con there should be an assessment of control risk. Uh, this should be uh, documented as what about the basis? So no need because in this ca case, um, the control risk is assessed to be high, meaning there is uh, the, the auditor will not rely on the internal controls okay so meaning he he is not responsible to substantiate that assessment what about if that less than high control risk is low so in this case he will uh, document the assessment of the control risk as well as his basis again this is for the purpose of substantiating his reliance on the internal control okay so those are for the internal control or test of control. So this next part is about substantive procedure. So this is another audit procedure. Okay. So substantive procedures are audit procedures designed to detect material misstatement also at the assertion level. So this is applied when the auditor's objective is to determine whether the peso amount or in terms of unit of an account was properly stated in the face of the financial statement. So, substantive procedures are intended to produce evidence to support the assertion that there are no material misstatements with regard to the completeness, validity, and accuracy of the FS. Okay, so thus, our substantive procedures are performed by an auditor to detect whether there are any material misstatements in accounting transactions and records okay so this is the focus of substantive procedures so another is um this is done for material classes of transactions account balances and disclosures okay these are always required for the auditor to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence if you could still remember in our previous um slide or video lecture where uh, either or regardless of the status of the internal control, if it is weak or strong, the auditor is required to perform still the audit or the substantive procedures. Unlike in the case of the test of controls, if the internal control is weak, then no test of controls is needed. 
Okay, so another topic is the nature of the substantive procedure. So here, um, substantive procedures has two types. So first, we have the substantive analytical procedures. So these are applied to obtain audit evidence on the particular assertion which is related to account balances or classes of transaction. Substantive analytical procedure. So, uh, subst uh, this will also identify unusual fluctuations okay, for further investigation. Um, this procedure alone may achieve specific audit objectives if the audit evidence that is gathered is considered to be persuasive, meaning um, the 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 quality of the audit evidence obtained is um, sufficient or it can um, convince the auditor okay, that a particular transaction pro uh, exists or um, is account balances are correct. Okay, So this procedure also is generally more applicable for large volumes of transactions though that tend to be predictable over time. Okay. Another type of substantive procedures is the test of details. So here, uh, these are performed to determine the actual details that makes up an account balance or transaction. Okay, so um, the test of details may be the test of transactions. So these are the test of processing individual transactions by uh, inspecting the documents as well as the accounting records involved in the processing if they are indeed um, recorded properly and measured correctly. So the test of uh, balances is the next type. So these are applied to the details of balances in general ledger accounts. So here, um, another type of test of details, aside from uh, the test of transactions, test of balances, at, by, by the way, test of transactions uh, will satisfy the assertion of um, occurrence and completeness. Test of balances is um, in terms of the amount okay, of a particular account. What about test of disclosure? So these are procedures to evaluate whether the overall presentation of FS, including the disclosures, are in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. So in designing the test of details, the nature of the risk and assertion is very relevant okay, to be considered. For instance, test of details related to the existence or occurrence assertion. Um, this may involve selecting items contained in the FS amount and obtaining relevant audit evidence which relates to that transaction. Okay, so this is how it is done. On the other hand, Test of details related to the completeness assertion may involve selecting also items that are expected to be included in the relevant FS amount and investigating whether they are included. Okay, so um, this is how it is done under the test of details for completeness assertion. Um, more types of evidence are obtained by using the test of balances also than by any other type of test. However, uh, the auditor generally uses other types of procedures along with the test of balances because these tests are considered to be the most costly and time-consuming. Okay, conversely, analytical procedures are considered to be the least expensive to perform among all the substantive procedures. So, in detecting material misstatement in the FS, the auditor may choose to perform either a substantive analytical procedure, test of details, or a combination of these two. 
So the decision about whether to use substantive analytical procedure or test of details will be based also on the auditor's judgment or professional judgment about uh, his expected effectiveness and efficiency of the procedures in the given circumstances, meaning it will depend on the circumstances and based on the professional judgment of the auditor. So in addition, the auditor should consider also the following. First, of course, is materiality. Okay, When balances are material, then the auditor does not often rely on analytical procedures. So he will perform test of details. Okay, Another is uh, the audit procedures directed toward the same audit objectives. Other procedures performed by the auditor in reviewing the collectability, for example, of accounts receivable, so such as the review of subsequent cash receipts. So he might confirm or dispel questions related to the application of the analytical procedures to the aging of customers' uh, accounts. So in this case, aside from the analytical uh, procedures, he should do the test of details and balances as well. Another is the accuracy in which expected results of analytical procedure can be predicted. So in this case, he will ordinarily expect greater consistency with uh, comparing gross profit margins from one period to another than comparing discretionary expenses. Okay, so in this case, um, the auditor will not only do the substantive analytical procedure, but he will also more likely perform the test of details and balances. Okay, another is assessment of control risk. So if the internal control is assessed to be ineffective, meaning the control risk will is assessed as high, so more reliance on test of details than the substantive analytical procedures. Okay. So the next is about the timing of substantive procedures. So here, the auditor may determine that it is effective to perform substantive procedures at the interim date if the internal controls are uh, effective. Okay. So in this case, um, you will compare and reconcile information concerning the balance at the period with the comparable information also at the interim period date two identify if there are amounts that appear unusual or deviations exists. Another is, or in, in connection to that, if the auditor have identified such deviation, so he will investigate such amounts. Okay, and he will perform substantive analytical procedures or test of details uh, to test the intervening period. Okay, whether they are consistent okay, from one period to another. So performing substantive procedures at an interim date without taking additional procedures at later date will increase the risk that the auditor will not detect misstatements. Okay, because in this case, um, he should also do the uh, substantive procedures at the period end to, to um, make sure Okay, that misstatements will be detected if they are existing at that uh, period end. So this risk increases also the remaining period as it is lengthened okay, because there are more time when that entity can still process okay, and do whatever they are doing. So there, um, the auditor will or should test okay, if it's still um, in accordance with the internal control or with the standards. So when unexpected misstatements are detected at interim date, so in this case, the auditor will modify his plan, nature, timing, and extent of substantive procedures, meaning he will add more substantive procedures because he expects that there are more misstatements. Okay? And also to cover the remaining period, um, so such modification may also include extending or repeating procedures that is performed at the interim date. Okay, it should be repeat, repeated in the period end. Okay, so lastly is the extent of substantive procedures. So how much substantive procedure should be performed? 
here, the auditor may increase uh, the extent of substantive procedures when the results from the test of controls are unsatisfactory or if the internal controls are ineffective. However, increasing the extent of the procedure is appropriate only if the audit procedure itself is relevant. So that is uh, an important consideration as well. Uh, and lastly, in designing test of details, so the extent of testing is ordinarily thought of in terms of its sample size. Okay, so if the sample will represent the whole. However, on other matters, um, or other matters are also relevant, including uh, it is more effective to use other selective means of testing aside from substantive procedures. Okay, so those are for the substantive procedures.